Hello everyone, my name is Raging Raptor and I welcome you to a new World of Tanks video and today we are going to have a look at the second iteration of Equipment 2.0 which is going to hit Sandbox on the 25th of June. Now, I once again did everything, putting it back together, cutting it down a little bit, cutting out the unnecessary part and put it all together into my PowerPoint because I had overwhelming response from you saying so many people said, yo, even if it is a little bit more um, stuff you have to do for it, it looks so much cleaner and it's much more enjoyable to see rather than just reading off the website. So yeah, let's just jump right in with the table of contents. We're going to have a look at the changes to the slot categories, changes to the equipment compatibility compatibility and bonuses, as well as new types of equipment, which we're going to do twice because I'm a little bit stupid, and then the rewards for participating in testing. Now, the big change is, or the first big change is that Wargame decided that, first of all, the category will be just about your vehicle type. Before it was like, for example, the EBR had two scouting slots, the mouse had two survivability slots, other tanks had like one survivability slot and one fire uh, mobility slot, like the IS-7, for example, and they said, nope, heavy tanks, survivability, medium tanks, mobility, light tanks, scouting, tank destroyers, firepower, SPGs, firepower. That's it. Slot 2 and slot 3 are for, free for you to use, aka it actually means that you have to be less concerned if you have really the meta build. This is, in my opinion, an okay change. However, if Wargaming wants to put it a step further, you know, it would be kind of interesting if Wargaming would force that category on you and you have to take something in there. That would be very interesting to see, but I don't think Wargaming is going to do that. But now let's go to the changes in equipment compatibility and bonuses because here we have a lot of different things. The first one they are talking about is the Wentz thingy and they did something which is in my opinion very uh, okay. They did slightly nerf the improved bonus from 6.5 to 6%. In my opinion, yes. Wentz will become like the most meta thingy ever because you can put it in a firepower slot, mobility slot, or a scouting slot, which is a lot of slots you can put this Wentz in. So I think it is good that Wargaming toned it down slightly from five from 6.5% to 6%. Still, I'm not a huge fan about why exactly we still need to have Wentz and why exactly we still need to have an improve um tank gun rammer, but that is a topic I already discussed in a different video and I still stand strong with this idea. Now, Wargaming also changed a little bit up with the improved aiming unit, where they decided to give it only to heavy tanks, destroyers, light and medium tanks, but not SPGs. So yeah, previously the normal bonus was just 5% to up to 9% and now it's 7 to 9, so meaning that if you not put it into a fire power slot, it's not that big of a deal. Nevertheless, I still consider this thingy to be basically useless because in a game where RNG is the key to victory, it doesn't even matter if you are 0.24 accurate or 0.22 accurate because in the end RNG is going to decide if you hit or not. And those 9% more accuracy, they make barely a difference. However, I do have to check this again when I'm doing a video myself about the topic more in depth. Now, Spawliner also got no real changes except that it is usable for all higher tier vehicles from tier 5 on. They did change the shell, well, they didn't, HE shell damage and ramming damage was buffed from well, it's now just 50 and 60. Protection to the crew from injuries is from 50 and 60%. Stun duration and at the additional stun duration, they all changed that a little bit, which is, in my opinion, okay, but it's the same thing as they had before. Now, the additional grousers, they did some changes right here, and it's a pretty decent one. You can see it's a hefty buff from 5 and 7.5% to 10 and 15% to hold traverse speed. So, not gonna lie, this thing, this additional grousers, might be very useful for a tank like the Aishu 152k, which is very, very sluggish and turning. However, you would have to need to give up your binos or your fuel range thingy. And also, 
acceleration got also buffed from 5 to and 7.5 to 7.5 and 10%, which is very, very interesting. Again, it's not available for SPGs or wheel tanks, but nevertheless, for all the other tanks, it's available. Then the Camonet also got a change. Now everybody, as far as I know, can keep it. All tier 2 and higher vehicles can use it. And you can see that they did some changes because previously only TDs and SPGs could use it. And SPGs get the lowest amount of bonus with heavies. Medium tanks get and light tanks get the meh amount of bonus. And the biggest bonus goes obviously for tank destroyers. Here they really only changed that once again heavy tanks can use it. Don't forget you do have to need gold to disassemble this thing from your tank. AK it's a little bit of a gut punch for free to play players. Now the low noise exhaust system, I don't know, it's still kind of useless in my opinion. Previously it was only there for heavy tanks and lights and medium tanks, but now it's for every class. And you can see heavy tanks and SPGs, this got a slight buff by 1% when it's not in the scouting slot. And by the way, just saying, SPGs and heavy tanks do not have a improved slot anyway. So this column right here is useless. Only light tanks are benefiting from the improved bonus being 9%. But yeah, no real changes there, to be honest. The binos here, the biggest thing is that it is available now again for everybody, for heavy tanks, medium tanks, light tanks, and even SPGs. Still, wheeled tanks are not getting the cut, which is totally fine, and I understand this, and I have to say, that's good. Still though, binos should not be bound to your tank, so you would have to need to disassemble it with gold, which would be very, very stupid. I really hope they reword that change, but they didn't say anything about that. Now, changes to the new types of equipment. This is very interesting. They cut down on new equipment stuff, but they made several adjustments and putting things together, which is very, very interesting. Like. Now the new equipment, in my opinion, has a pretty decent chance of getting picked up and starting to be meta. Let's have a look at the improved rotation mechanism. Now, the changes are bonus have been reduced to both standard and improved equipment. However, increase the hull as an improved main transmission and to it as an gun traverse amplifier speed. And the dispersion reduction is now similar to the stabilizer equipment effect. So now, Reducing gun dispersion during hull traverse, which is cool. Increased hull traverse and, and turret traverse speed for vehicles with turrets. Increases the hull and the gun traverse speed for vehicles with stationary cabins. Like again, this thing right here, no, 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 seriously, this thing right here will be the game changer for tanks like the Aishu 152K, in my personal opinion. Maybe even the Stritzwagen 103. However, you would need to give up something like Binos or your Camonet. And again, reduce the gun dispersion during movement on during hull traverse and turret traverse. Again, this is the biggest changer. I don't really know what exactly. I think it trades your hull traverse speed and turret traverse speed for additional, um, additionally, instead of just giving a flat out better accuracy on the move and on the turret traverse like the stabilizer would give. So this is a very, very interesting thing and it's most likely most important for tank destroyers. So I'm very interested to see how this is going to pan out. The next one being the improved hardening and oh boy, that thing, that is whew, so much things got pumped into this. Now, you get, if it's improved, 10% weak clip points instead, eight, otherwise 8%. The sus suspension load capacity got increased, got added to it. The suspension durability got added to it. Hull damage caused by suspension damage, well, was also added to it. Oh, oh that was very bad, Pingy. What did I do now? I'm stupid. And the suspension repair speed was also added. Like, that thing, the improved hardening now, is a very, 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 very good thing for most heavy tanks. And I'm most likely considering to use this instead of, for example, something like events. Because I still do like uh, the stabilizer, the improved stabilization, because it just allows me to be 25% more accurate to do some more snapshots. Because when your aim is good, you don't need to fully aim. And I can say I can forgive or 
remove 5% of everything for having something like this. Again, you get more hit points, which is basically that's not really important. But your tracks are 20% faster in repairing, which is very cool. You'll get suspensions which are being more capable, like they need more damage to get removed or detracted, meaning that some people might be trying to detract you from the side, like in an even 100, and they shoot into your road wheel, and you're like, I don't give a shit because I got this stuff, and you just keep on rolling over them. Like, this is a very, very strong and um, equipment. And again, it's only available for all the normal tanks, SPGs, get the middle finger. You could also really... If, um, Oh, not really, that's the other one. Because now we go to the new improved configuration and that thing, that thing is also very, 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 very good because it combines four things. The cyclone filter, the wet amorac, the fuel tanks and the toolbox are all, the uh, toolbox are all getting put into one thingy. So now it prevents one fuel tank fire one Amorak explosion or engine destruction in one battle. Like this thing most likely will be meta for the 279 because it can get Amorak with one shot very easily. And look at that, 150% to Amorak, fuel tanks and engine durability. Like tanks which we have weak Amoraks, weak engines, they will love this thing. Like I am going so far on saying that I will, I could probably use this in the what's it called, in the tank like the Chieftain, instead of a Stabilizer or instead of Wentz, to be honest, because this is very good, at least for random battles, most likely not um, competitive games, because you do want to have this 5% edge. <laughs> like, you also get a minus 65% chance of engine fire, and you have plus 35% repair speed. And again, if you get ammo wrecked, in theory, you don't have like half the reload time, you only have 25% of the reload time which you are missing or 15% uh, if I'm not mistaken with my math. Like, this is also counting to the, the engine, you know? So if your engine is damaged, it won't cut your HP power in half, but just in a fourth. Like this, this improved configuration looks to me like this is a very, very strong thingy for tanks which don't really need the added stun protection and are prone to Amorax. Like, this thing could still be used on a tank like the Leopard 1, which has also a very weak Amorax. However, I do think, like, for the casual players, this is amazing. This is amazing. In competitive, mm, don't think so, don't think so. But for casual players or for random games, this will be the best thing ever. Like, this looks very good to me personally. But let me know in the comment section below if you think this is also very good. Now, Wargaming also changed the turbocharger. And my goodness, sure, they nerfed it. It's not a 15% anymore you're going to get when you put it in the mobility slot. But 6 kph top speed, 4 kph reverse speed added as a bonus. That is... That is very good. Like, not gonna lie, that is very, very decent. Now you can truly have a very, very strong, a very strong E50M rammer. Because now you don't really necessarily, you just need the, the turbocharger, which gives you everything needed with top speed and stuff. And you can use um, the, what's it called? The other thingy, the, um, can quickly go back. I think it's this one right here because it, um, no, 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 no. It's, I think, where is it? Oh, they didn't remove it. I'm actually not sure anymore. This one, the spall liner, because um, the ramming damage, which is getting reduced. And maybe you just use Wentz or a rammer. And you're still basically... This thing is basically making the E50M suddenly so much stronger than previously it was when you were playing the meme build. Like, the turbocharger is very strong. Not gonna lie, this could potentially be a niche build for certain tanks. I don't think it will be great for tanks like... The, well... It could be good for the STB-1 because it just has 45 kph top speed as far as I have in my mind. So you go up to 51 and you would be even faster in reverse, meaning that you are speedy Gonzales in reverse. Plus you have more en engine power. So on maps like um, Cliff, where you want to get the middle position in a competitive scenario, the turbocharger may or may not be the go-to thing. 
Same goes for um, 907. The question is if it is worth it to give up, for example, Wentz, because usually you do want to keep the stabilizer. Is it worth it to give up 5% on everything or 6.5 or 7.5, I think it was, on everything? To get more speed, that is the big question. The 907 does struggle a little bit with acceleration and rather also top speed. It's, it's a hard judge, but it looks much... Like, this thing right here makes me consider to using it on tanks again, like the 907, like the 140, which already, for example, has very, very good scan stabilization. But, who knows? And once again, it is not available for wheelie boys. Meaning, you will not get your EBR, which is driving 101 kph, so let's go to the next thing. The next thing being the improved radio set. And this is, once again, it just combines the two things we already had, the jamming device and the other thing. And that is so very strong again, because, it, well, it was only two seconds and not four, if I remember correctly. But that is still very good. The question is, is it really worth it over the other option we're going to have a look at in just a second? Because that option... Oof. That thing, that thing may or may not be changing completely how light tanks are being played. That may or may not make light tanks too strong. This is the combination of the panoramic triplex and the commander vision update upgrade. Reduces the concealment of enemy vehicles either moving or behind vegetation. Reduces the concealment of moving enemies and the vegetation and concealment coefficient of an enemy vehicle during spotting. This allows you to spot moving enemies for longer distances and from longer distances and more effectively spot enemies that are concealed by bushes or fallen trees. Like that thing right here is literally the thing an EBR needs to counter everything. So that is very strong. Depends really what Wargaming is doing with the EBR nerfs. However, obviously normal scouts can also use that. And, like, the question is, like, the biggest question in my opinion is, on tanks like the EBR, if you, if you still want to have kind of, of a, an attacker tank, like a tank which still can do damage, you want to use Wentz and Rammer, obviously. It, do you get a bigger bonus out of this than what if you would take... For example, optics. However, if you say I don't give a damn about when, um, excuse me, about the rammer, and you use when improved wins, improved optics, and the commander vision up system in the scouting slot, that is like <laughs> that is very strong. Like this thing right here. This may or may not be the equipment which I was waiting for for ages. Because this may or may not be changing how light tanks are being played. This could make light tanks a lot better at scouting and they would need to less rely on damage. This thing more or less will make me consider to drop um, Wentz to have stable, um, to have all, to have a rammer. You know what? No, not really. Most Maybe I will just keep on having Wentz, Optics, and this thing right here. Like, imagine, for example, as a Rheinmetall uh, Panzerwag with 420 base fuel and you get around 500 with stuff. So you already have like 60 meters of camo braking. An additional 20% to vehicle behind foliage. That is... <laughs> that is insane. Like, this thing right here may or may not be too strong for now. We'll see. I have to do some tests. I don't know if I have the time for that because of my exams, which are getting closer and closer and closer. But that thing is... Like, I am... I'm impressed. For scouts, this is amazing. And for a passive scout... Like a manticore, if you, if you truly say, I don't give a damn that I cannot have an impact into the game when it's not a scouting map, and you play a tank like the manticore with this thing in a scouting slot, with Wentz and with a, with a binos. Like, that is insane what uh, you can spot. Like, I'm pretty certain that, for example, on 
Prokhorovka on the camping line, if you go get into the E1 bush, you will have no trouble whatsoever to spot people trying to advance. Like, this right here most likely will be a game changer for competitive, but also for passive scout tanks, like the ELC Even 90. However, it is a hefty price to pay if you want to be a truly passive scout. But that's my personal opinion. So, lastly, rewards for participating in testing. That's the only real interesting one, because the reward for the main server will be one day of premium if you play 30 days, uh, 30 battles. The question is, is it worth it for you? That's really the question. Because this will take around a day or so to grind out. So if you don't, if you're a free-to-play player, go for it. Sure, you have some fun, really. You have a decent chunk of funds. You get like 30,000 gold on the sandbox server, not on the live server, because some people ask me that. And you can get a day of, a day of premium. That sounds good, right? But yeah, conclusion. In my opinion, Wentz will still be strong. There will be more powerful builds than in the first iteration. They maybe will be more variety. Variety. New models have a huge benefit. Like the new ones they want to introduce with the uh, with the combined bonuses, they are insane. Like I do not know how to otherwise point it. That's very, 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 very good. However, I personally still think for the majority of the, uh, the, the meta will most likely consist of rammer wins and insert the new model or the, your favorite stuff. That will still be the same thing. The same goes for improved equipment. Improved equipment will most likely, except for rare edge cases, will stay as it is. In true, improved equipment will be better than bound equipment. It's still a bad thing in my opinion and improved equipment will still be the best option. I still think that this is not the best way to go. But again, this is my first conclusion of what we just read on the paper. So yeah. I'm, I really like what they did with the new equipments, like the new new ones, the ones that re, they just now introduced. The spotting one looks insanely strong. The harden, like the changes they did to the hardening, the, uh, the modules and stuff, they look great. They really do make me consider putting them on different tanks. However, for a casual player, 100%, 1000%, they're amazing. In a competitive example, I'm not sure. Because in competitive, you're going to use improved equipment anyway. You're going to prove you use 907, 279, Chieftain, EBRs, etc., etc., etc. And most of those tanks all have improved equipment on. And improved equipment, bonds equipment, have a higher impact or have a higher percentage they get. So they are automatically better. So it's hard to say if you really want to remove one of your precious bond equipments to get, um, what's it called? To get one of the newer things. For the EBR, or for scouts in general, this Commander Vision upgrade, that's very good. That's very, very, very good. But yeah, there's one final thing, and it's feedback. And I have to say, if you liked the video style I added like this, let me know in the comment section below, because it did took me a decent chunk of time to set this all up, because there were so many pictures. And I hope you are fine with that. And if you're new to the channel and want to always be up to date with World of Tanks stuff, even though I have finals, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Because we are in a little bit of an arms race. You right now are at 7,240 subs, but we mile my German channel, which gave me the opportunity to become a content creator for World of Tanks, is at 7,270. Do you manage to kill them and get bigger than my German community? Because let's be honest, the English community should be larger than just German, which is consisting of Germany, Switzerland and Austria. Not Australia. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and let me know in the comment section below what you think about those changes. I see you in another video. Tomorrow I will have my first final and then have a break until one Monday next week where we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday finals. And then I'm finally, finally for like two months, I'm free of charges of studying. I'm so looking forward to this because I have so many plans to do. Not going, not actually going out and doing a lot more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers and I'll see you on the battlefield.